Hey, what's up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We're gonna classify matter as pure substances or mixtures through investigation of their properties. Okay, but let's break that down a little bit because you probably won't be able to do too much investigation on your own. However, by the end of this video, we wanna be able to identify a substance as an element, compound, homogeneous mixture, or heterogeneous mixture. Two. We wanna explain the difference between elements and compounds. And three, explain the difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. So first, what the heck are those things? And then second, what's the difference between them? Okay, so as we think about studying chemistry, chemistry is the study of matter. What's the matter with you? Nothing, what's the matter with you? And matter makes up a lot of things. Anything that has a mass and takes up space. It's a lot of things. And so in chemistry, we can't study all things at once. We can't study all of matter, not at one time. And so what we do is we break it down into different classifications. And the first classification that we can make is either as a pure substance or a mixture. Now let's start with pure substances. They have a fixed composition, or that composition doesn't change, and cannot be separated by physical means. In other words, you can't separate a pure substance by sorting, filtering, heating, or cooling. Now we've got two types of pure substances. The first type is an element. This is made up of just one type of atom. So as you take a look at your screen, you've got two particle representation of elements. Now, as you look at the image on your left, this one seems pretty obvious that it's made up of one type of atom. It's just this green type. It's a special type of element. It's called a diatomic element. But notice that it still fits that definition of one type of atom. However, this time it's the blue type. But whether it's monatomic or diatomic, as long as it's made up of one type of atom, we classify it as an element. Think of copper, gold, oxygen gas. All of these things are elements. Ever wanted a list of all the known elements, you can check them out on the periodic table. The second type of pure substance is a compound. And a compound is still a pure substance, but now we've got two or more elements combined or bonded in a fixed proportion. So for compounds, think about water or salt. At the molecular level, notice here, as we look at this sample of water, that you've got two different types of atoms. Compound, two or more different types of atoms bonded together. As you take a look at this water molecule, two different types, the red type and the white type, chemically combined in a fixed proportion. That proportion is two white ones to one red one. And if you know your formula for water, it's two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now, the law of definite proportions states that a compound contains the same elements in exactly the same proportions by mass, regardless of the size or source of the compound. So as you think about the formula for water, H2O, it doesn't matter where you get your sample of water from, it's always gonna be two hydrogens, in this case, these white atoms, to one atom of oxygen or this red one. Law of definite proportions. Okay, our next big classification of matter is of mixtures. And here we have a blend of two or more kinds of matter. But each of those kinds of matter retain its own identity and properties and can easily be separated by physical means. So as you take a look at the molecular level of an example of a mixture, notice in this mixture, I've got an example of a couple of different elements and a compound. The green particle would represent an element because it's just one type of atom, as would the blue diatomic element because it's just one type of atom. However, this mixture also contains a compound, which is that red and white one because it's two types of atoms chemically bonded together. Now we've got two types of mixtures. The first type, homogeneous mixture, contains two or more substances, but blended evenly, also known as a solution. The substance doing the dissolving in a solution is called the solvent. And typically, the most common solvent we use is water. And the substance being dissolved in a solution or homogeneous mixture is called the solute. So a couple of key terms that we're gonna use, not only in this, in this unit, but throughout the year. And as you take a look at your screen, I want you to think about the solution or homogeneous mixture that I've put on the screen and other solutions that you interact with on a daily basis. And so it's a Friday night and you're looking for something to do with your friends, you can just roll around the house and 
point out all the awesome solutions. It's important to note that solutions come in not only the liquid phase, but also solid and gas phases. I mean, think about the air that we breathe, made up of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, bunch of other gases, but it's all evenly blended together. I mean, think about what you do to breathe. You aren't doing this <gasps> to get to the pockets of oxygen. The oxygen is evenly blended throughout the solution of air. Heterogeneous mixture, on the other hand, still made up of different materials, but here they're easily distinguishable and it's not the same throughout. I like to think of pizza as a macro scale example of a heterogeneous mixture. You can easily tell the different parts and pieces, and it's not the same throughout. If I were to divide up this pizza and give a piece to all my friends, one friend might get two tomatoes and three peppers and one mushroom, and the next friend might get four tomatoes, six mushrooms, and one pepper. Not the same throughout. However, it's important to recognize that both heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures can be separated by physical means. And this is a big distinction to make between mixtures and pure substances. Now there are lots of ways that you can physically separate a mixture. There are three ways that we're gonna talk about here. The first is a process called filtration, where you simply pour a mixture through a filter paper that is designed to allow only the liquid to pass. And as you take a look at your notes, you're provided with a setup for the filtration process and we'll practice this process in class. You can also separate a homogeneous mixture of liquids by using a process called distillation. Now this one's a little trickier to do, plus we don't really wanna to mess too much with volatile liquids in class. And what happens in this mixture is we take advantage of oftentimes the different boiling points of one part of the mixture. A condenser is then used to recollect what has been evaporated or vaporized. As you take a look at your notes, you're also provided with a great image to show you sort of what a distillation setup would look like. And then lastly, paper chromatography takes advantage of the fact that different components of a mixture may have different attractions to a solvent and a paper, causing them to separate out. This is also something that we'll do in class. As you take a look at your notes, there's a dot of ink there. And as the solvent sort of moves up this paper, different dyes, different color dyes are attracted to the solvent and the paper differently and they're able to separate out. All right, boom, and we are done. As always, check out the info beneath the video for those references.